Yala Sangha everyone and uh, welcome to day 18 of our 31 day so practice so we're kind of well over halfway and um, I hope that you are feeling good and if you are um, doing them every day fantastic if you're doing one every two or three days and you're just going to take your time and it will take you two or three months it's also great right it's just like having something um, to commit to and to connect with yourself is really is really helpful. Um, one of the ideas that I think of yoga is it's actually, it's an art of observation. It's an art of observing how we move, how we um, breathe, how we think. And we start to notice that in other situations, whether it's whether we've been sitting at a desk too long or whether our breath is a little faster, Especially when you come in a situation that maybe makes you a little um, uptight, you know, like it changes your breath, okay? And then notice in your mind, right? What's the, what are the tendencies of your mind? Are they to be a little bit more critical of yourself? Can you transform that? We're, we'll um, talk about mantra at the end of today's practice again. Um, but yeah, it's just giving ourselves insight to ourselves, okay? Like I, I say yoga is kind of an education and the subject is you, right? Okay. Um, okay, let's, we're going to do more mobilization stuff. We did that in day one. Um, we're going to do some standing mobilization, but we'll start with some seated mobilization. So take whatever space you have, let your legs go a little bit wider and just tap them up and down, get them nice and loose and shake off your legs from side to side and start to circle your feet around. You can do this sitting against a couch or sitting against a wall if, you, if you're like, oh, actually, I don't really um, feel that comfortable. In a seated position with my legs, you can do this with your back against the wall, okay? And then let your toes come in and out, okay? And just notice the inside of your thighs, maybe how that feels. Try and get them a little bit freed up, okay? And then bend one knee and bring your knee up towards you okay see if you can touch it with your nose okay and then let your nose your nose let your knee <laughs> drop out to the side you can let your nose drop out to the side too and let it go from side to side and then see if you can bring your toe up to your nose okay and gently work with that good okay and then bring your hands around your knee again and start to circle your foot and circle it in the opposite direction. See how that feels for you today. Try to get the circles gradually a little bit wider and wider. Good. And then let your foot come out to the side, tap your knees up and down, bring the other leg in, okay? See how that feels on that side, okay? Take your hands around your knee, bring your knee up towards you, see if you can touch your nose towards your knee, okay? Let your knee drop out, go from side to side, your nose and your toes, your toes and your nose. Okay, good. And then from there, let that leg come out, tap them up and down. Okay, bring the first leg in and hold somewhere on the foot, right? So there's a few options here. You can hold the ankle, okay, and make the movement from there. You can hold around the outside edge of your foot and make the movement from there. Or you can hold your big toe with your middle and index finger and make the movement from there. Okay, my friend from Cyprus actually, um, I did an online class with her once and she was doing this kind of stuff to warm up. She's a really um, strong, mobile person. So we're just taking the foot out and in. Okay, doesn't have to go too far. We're not forcing length through our body. We're just gradually mobilizing our body. And you can bring it a little closer in, just using your hands and never force, right? You're not like, Ugh! okay? Just giving yourself a little bit of encouragement to increase your, your movement. And then you can take it wider and try and get it to your shoulder, the opposite shoulder, okay? And again, we're not forcing, not fighting. If you find it helpful to, to lean back, lean back against the couch or sit on something underneath your hips, and then you can even try and bring it to your ear. Okay, take your call. Okay. So towards the groin, towards the shoulder, towards the ear. Okay. But with no force, no like 
hauling at yourself. Just a, like a little gentle encouragement for that movement. Let your foot come out. Bring the other leg in. Let your knee gently go up and down. Okay. Take hold of this foot, or either around the ankle or around the outside edge of your foot, or around your middle and index finger, your peace fingers, and between your big toe and your second toe, and start to move that away from your groin. Good. Keeping the breath smooth and easy. Going a little wider, if you can, maybe. And then thinking about coming towards the shoulder, the opposite shoulder. Good. And then maybe towards the ear. Okay. These will be various levels of trickiness. So to the groin, to the shoulder, and to the ear. Okay. Good. And then shake off your legs, get them nice and loose, tap them up and down, shake them from side to side and bring them in to a seated position and then let your arms go out, okay? And start to draw circles with your hands. You feel this movement into your shoulder. So even close your eyes while you're making these circles. Start to pay attention to your shoulders. The arms are quite heavy, okay? So you might feel it's quite strong for your shoulders and your upper back and your pecs eventually and then change directions. Good. And then let your hands rest and shoulder rows. Okay. So you bring your shoulders forward, up to the middle, back and down. Try and get the full range of motion in that. So doing both at the same time. Okay. Good. And then for, uh, backwards, up, forwards and down. Try and get this movement through your shoulders. Backwards, up, forwards and down. Just big rolls. And then try, do one at a time. Okay. Going forwards, up, backwards and down. And then the other one. Okay. See how one side feels compared to the other side. Which one's your good side? Which one's your great side? Okay. And then see if you can do forward and backwards and kind of just get them going. One's going forwards, up, backwards and down. And the other's doing the opposite. It's going backwards, up, forwards and down. Okay. Good. And then switch. Okay. Get yourself ready for the uh, the dance floor. Okay. <laughs> shake off your fingers, your wrists. Roll up your shoulders, shake all the way up. We're going to do a little bit more shaking today. I really uh, I find uh, shaking really effective. I was teaching a class yesterday, actually Monday night, and there was a teacher in there doing something called TRE, which is trauma release exercises, I think, this is the E stands for. And there's a lot of shaking and just trying to get that whatever tension we're holding our body out. So let's see if we can stand up without using our hands and see how that feels for you today. And give everyone a wee gentle shake off to begin with. And then put one foot slightly forward, okay? And the other foot slightly back. And all we're gonna do is transfer weight between the front foot and the back foot. Okay, as you lift the front foot, spread your toes, get them super wide, and then let them come down. Maintain the width. As you lift the back heel, try and push in through your big toe and extend through your back foot, okay? So you, one foot is getting wider, the one at the front, and the other foot is getting longer, the one at the back, okay? Good. And then start to swing the opposite hand to your front foot. You might do half circles. Some people call them semi-circles. <laughs> you might do a full backstroke, okay? And you might do a front crawl. Okay, see how these are feeling for you today? Getting this big movement through your arm and your shoulders. And remember the arm is not just 
starting at the shoulder, right? It's coming in through the pec. It's coming in through your upper back. Actually, if you touch your collarbone, okay? So if you come up your breastbone and touch the inside of where your collarbone meets your sternum, move your arm around. And you feel the joint there between your collarbone and your sternum moving around there, okay? So it's not the shoulder and then out to the fingers, it's actually integrated into the whole of our body, okay? Then start to shake off the hand you've been swinging. Get it as loose as you can. Shake off your wrists. Shake off your forearm. Good. Shake off your upper arm, your elbow. Shake off your shoulder, okay? And then shake off your toes. Same side, okay? Toes, foot, ankle, lower leg, knee, upper leg, and hip. So that whole side is getting the chance to get quite loose. And then the, the foot we've been shaking should be the foot that was at the back the previous time. So put that foot now towards the front. And move gently between the front foot and the back foot. Okay. Again, doing the same thing. Widening the front foot as you lift it. And pushing out and back through the back heel. So you get a little longer, a little wider. Feet are really like have such amazing potential, you know, but we, we suffer from putting them in shoes all the time, okay? And then let your arm start to sweep. See how that feels for you today. Half circles if you feel like that. A full circle if you feel like that. Okay. Shaking it all off. Okay. And then from there, get those fingers really loose. Shake off through your wrist, through your forearm, through your elbow, through your upper arm, through your shoulder. Get that whole thing loose. Okay. And then the toes. Toes, foot, ankle, lower leg, knee, upper leg. Okay, good, and then from there, let everything rest, okay. Stand a little taller, let your shoulders soften, okay. And we'll come back to balancing again. We're going to do a move and balance today, okay. So let your weight rest through your right foot, and just take your left foot up off the floor. If you're feeling like your balance is a bit uh, off today, then do one of the things we've done before, tree posture, but all we're going to do is let our foot come in front of the opposite leg and then behind the opposite leg. And we're going to let it go in front and behind, in front and behind, okay. Letting this move and see how this feels for us, okay, good. Good, and then you can bring your knee up, give it a wee hug, give it a wee kiss, and then shake everything off, okay? Good, let's try the other side. Put your weight on this side. Take your foot, opposite foot up off the floor, the one that was your standing leg, and let it start to move from one side to the other side. Okay, so from the front to the back. So we really feel like we're kind of challenging our balance. So if you feel yourself losing your balance, don't panic, right? Just try and go, okay, how do I bring myself back? Good. Sweeping forwards. And then bringing that foot up, hug your knee, give it a wee kiss, and shake it all off. Get nice and loose, okay? Let's see if we can sit down without using our hands. Okay, good. Shuffle your hips from side to side. Okay, can you transfer yourself to one of our other positions from here to a kneeling position? Whatever way you like, okay? You move your legs the way that feels helpful for you, okay? Can you transfer this to a squatting position without using your hands? Okay. And then back to a cross leg position, okay? So we're using our legs and the strength and dexterity of our legs 
more and more, okay? You know, like we quite often feel we need to use our hands to bring our legs to the position that we feel we want them in, okay? Let's try that one more time. To a kneeling position, okay? To a squatting position, okay? To a seated position, okay? And if, you, if, if you're starting to get fairly um, comfortable with that, it's kind of interesting to ask other people in your life to do that. Maybe your partner, maybe your siblings, okay? It's kind of it's kind of funny to see people trying to what for us becomes quite uh, just a part of our movement vocabulary. Okay, and I'll talk more about that tomorrow. Okay, so one of the main tools I use in in breathing is is taking twelve breaths. Okay, and now you can count the twelve breaths inside. That's a totally fine way and. and People have been doing that a lot, but one of the ways we can do is to look at the four fingers of one of our hands, and you see on the four, each finger there's three segments, right? Okay. Touch your thumb to the bottom segment of your index finger. So that's number one, okay? Then we go up to the top, so we go one, two, three, up to the top. We come along the top, along the other three fingers, four, five, six, and then we come down the pinky to seven and eight, okay? We come along the ring finger to number nine, to the bottom segment, the bottom segment of the middle finger, number 10, the middle of the, mingo, the, middle of the middle finger, which is number 11, and then the middle of your ring finger, which is number 12. So we've done a little spiral around, right? So there's 12 segments. So what we're gonna do, now my pace might be, uh, not your pace, okay? So if you want to go faster or slower, you can go faster or slower, okay? But it normally takes about two minutes to do this, roughly six breaths per minute, okay? Roughly. So take your thumb to the bottom of your index finger, take a slow inhale, and a slow exhale. To the middle of your index finger, take a slow inhale, And a slow exhale. Top of your index finger. Again, slow inhale. Slow exhale. Top of your middle finger. And and out. Top of your ring finger. Top of your pinky. The middle of your pinky. The base of your little finger, your pinky. The base of your ring finger. the base of your middle finger, the middle of your middle finger, the middle of your ring finger. So these 12 slow breaths, you might feel you want to do it again. If you have time, then I'd encourage you to do another round on your own. You can start to combine that with the mantra, breathing in, I know I'm breathing in, breathing out, I know I'm breathing out. But use this as a tool. I use it sometimes if I'm in a, uh, if I'm in a waiting room sometimes, you know, like and maybe at the dentist, you know, especially if you're somebody who can feel a bit nervous at the dentist or at the, the doctors or somewhere where you feel, before you go in for an interview, if you uh, ever have the joy of an interview or a date, okay, find somewhere maybe on the bus into town. I'm going to take 12 breaths. I'm going to slowly breathe in, slowly breathe out. 
Okay. Yeah, Sangha, everyone, thanks for using these tools. Thanks for joining the practice today. Be kind to yourself and try to be kind to someone else. And we'll be back for day 19 tomorrow. Shanti. <laughs>